We're getting very little facts that are coming out. The best that we can tell is that there, in fact, was a demonstration. It was the 49th anniversary of the uprising against the Chinese who invaded Tibet in 1949, 1950. Um, there was a protest last fall, which I think was the last time I spoke to you, after His Holiness the Dalai Lama received the Congressional Gold Medal. Uh, and there were monks from, I believe, Drepung Monastery in Lhasa who uh, celebrated that, that medal being won by the Dalai Lama. They were arrested, are still under arrest now, and there was a recent protest uh, on their behalf in Lhasa. The, uh, the Chinese government, as you know, they're accusing these protesters and the Dalai Lama, for that matter, of provoking this incident, trying to cause this kind of a situation to unfold. Uh, I wonder if you want to respond to, the, to their accusations. Oh, well, that's clearly foolish and, and embarrassing for them. Uh, we have a situation here where the Tibetans have been brutally repressed now for 50 years, 55 years, close, close to six decades. Now, when you repress a people to the degree that the Tibetans have been brutalized, they will explode. All people will explode. Now, Tibetans are incredibly loving and forgiving people. The Dalai Lama has been, has been uniform in keeping the Tibetan movement nonviolent. He is the winner of the Nobel Peace so you, Prize. So you reject this because the timing coming only a few months before the Summer Olympic Games in Beijing, this, these are not the kinds of pictures that the Chinese regime, the Chinese government, clearly wants no. the world no, to see right you, now. Wolf, it can't Wolf. set the stage for them uh, well right now. You obviously understand what the, the point that people are making. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've been making my calls about this, and the best information I'm getting is this was totally spontaneous. This was not organized. Now, there will be organized demonstrations around the Olympics, no question about that. But this was an outpouring of, of emotion, which was spontaneous. And the fact that it wasn't just among the monks and nuns, who traditionally, especially the nuns, have been the ones who have protested in simple nonviolent marches and expressions of, of freedom. Uh, but this has gone into the lay community as well, and that's extremely rare. People have, have traditionally been brutalized by the Chinese, and this is taking an extraordinary chance for them, not unlike in Burma that we saw a few months ago. Uh, what, and in what, fact, the Chinese are behaving very similarly to that very brutal military crackdown on civilians. And we remember the, the amazing pictures that were coming out of Burma. What should the U.S. government be doing about this, uh, this, latest, uh, up, uh, this, this, late, this latest series of demonstrations and, and a very strong uh, response from the Chinese uh, government? What should the U.S. be doing? Well, the U.S. response should not be measured. It should be unequivocal. This cannot happen. Uh, the U.S. government has been very good in every opportunity bringing up Tibet and as a forceful friend of the Tibetan people and the Dalai Lama. But this is clearly a time that if China wishes to be the world power, the respected world power that it appears that it wants to be and is on the edge of becoming, it cannot behave this way. Uh, inclusive societies become great societies. Brutalizing your own people is not a way to greatness. Do you see any differences between the various presidential candidates, because you've studied this issue closely, on this human rights issue? Uh, certainly the Democrats, you know, are uniform and have said so to me. Obama has said it to me very clearly that, that he understands the motivation of the Tibetan people and they have a right to live to the pursuit of happiness, the pursuit of religion. And these are the things that have been taken away from them by the Chinese. And uh, Hillary Clinton or, Bar uh, or John McCain, have you had any conversations with them about John this? John McCain, I also had to talk. I haven't had sp specifically with, with Hillary Clinton, but uh, John and I did speak about it. And he's very much a human rights person as well and very much a supporter of the Dalai Lama. So this is not necessarily an issue where there's going to be a lot of political dissent. I don't think so. Uh, the, the whole Tibetan thing has been across the aisle and almost from the beginning. I mean, these, these kind of, the honoring of the Dalai Lama uh, has been universal in, in U.S. government. Presidents, both sides of Congress, uh, the, the unanimous uh, approval of, of uh, proclamations about Tibetan freedom um, not separation, but freedom, uh, have been universal, have been consistent, uh, and I have no problem with the U.S. government. But this is a time to be very clear with the Chinese. If you want to be a world power, you must behave in a certain way, and this is not appropriate. 
And let's hope uh, things quiet down over there. Uh, I hope so, too. We all hope so. Appreciate your coming in, uh, Richard Gere. Thanks very Thank much. You. Let's continue this dialogue down the road. Thanks. And, uh, by the way, I, I, one, one, I want to just congratulate you. They dropped the charges. On a totally, I knew you were going to get that on, in. On a totally I knew you were going to do it. Matter no, in no, India. no, 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 no. You don't get that one. <laughs> <laughs> you, want to, you want to express your happiness uh, over that kissing incident uh, with the movie no, star? No, I'll tell you what to express my happiness is when the Chinese leave the Tibetans alone. The brutality here is an unbelievable degree. And the reality is, this is a sad reality. The Tibetans have to be in a violent situation for people to notice. An incredibly peaceful, nonviolent people. How do they find a way to get in the news? How do they find a way to capture the world attention? It's sad that it has to come to this.